Okay, so listen, you're going, you're appeasing us because we're a couple of idiots. And yesterday we got into this discussion about planets and all this stuff. I saw that discussion. Yes. You did. Yeah. Okay, so let's start with this. <laughs> He's wagging his finger at us. L let's start with this. Her fear that uh, at some point we're colliding with other planets. No, and the sun. Tell him your fear. My fear, we're going to blow up eventually, right? No. And I just don't want my kids, 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 kids to blow up. Okay, let's let him respond to that. Silly okay, so, so no, the sun will not die in an explosion and take Earth with it. The sun will die. It just won't be an explosion. It, it, it may, it's a little more, a little more um, a slower than the death that an explosion would bring. The sun will ultimately expand and become so large that it will engulf the entire orbit of the planet Mercury and Venus and ultimately Earth itself. Wow. That's even worse. Wait, wait. <laughs> That's even worse. When's wait, this going to happen? Wait. And so what will happen is Earth's oceans will come to a slow rolling boil and evaporate into the atmosphere. <laughs> and then the <laughs> atmosphere will evaporate into space. And then Earth will be this charred ember as it descends and vaporizes into the surface of the sun. Now, as, as, as so, somebody, so have a nice day. Yes. yes, thank you so much. Have a great day as we come to a slow broil. Now, okay. Let me ask you this. As somebody who loves science, what yeah. geeks you out most? Like, like I love recruiting for college football. I'm a total nerd on it. In, in the science world, how do, when do you go super geeky? Wait, I, I get geeky when there are new discoveries that are long awaited. Uh, the discovery of the new exoplanets, which is what you guys were talking about yesterday. Yes. And uh, the discovery of the of the gravity wave that has been moving through the fabric of space time for 1.3 billion years, because that's how long ago two black holes collided. Yeah. And it sent this ripple through the fabric of space time. And we turned on our machine for the first time and then captured it. And this was predicted by Einstein 100 years ago. That's that's total geek material right there. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. C Colin, you missed out on a huge question here. He just said we're going to boil and evaporate. I know. He just when went is, right by that. When What's is this going to happen? <laughs> okay, so, so here's the thing. That won't take place for another 5 billion years. Yeah. So I would presume if humans are still alive and we don't render ourselves extinct by some acts of stupidity or some acts of... of <laughs> of ignorance, with that we would find a way to maybe move to Mars. You want to sort of move away from the sun as it gets bigger and bigger. And ultimately, just pick up ship, pick up, take your bags and move to another solar system. Okay. okay right so, the stars out there. All right. so, so two questions. You think that we will still be alive at that time, like humans? No. Not at all. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're going to do something stupid to kill ourselves. And yeah. two... Yeah, I, I just don't have confidence. I, I see how we treat each other. Yes. I don't... I don't, it doesn't look good. Yeah, I think it would be by our own doing that we're going to go extinct. Yes, yes. I, I agree with him. I, that, that's what, that's the biggest problem. It's not the sun. It's that we're dictators and we're power hungry and we treat people without power horribly. And, yeah, and, and it, you also and think. Just make sure you worry about the right things, you know? Like they're, what? They're, okay. No, no, I mean, just if you rank your priorities of what you will lose sleep over. You should not be losing sleep over the death of the sun when so many other things will kill you before then. Okay. What I want to talk about space travel. Like my, sure. I've heard about uh, flying cars forever. Can you give me a realistic view of how travel will change in the next thirty to fifty years? Yeah, I, I don't. You know, I, I used to think I was good at predicting the future, and then I just gave up because I'm old enough to remember the original Star Trek series. Yeah, and I would say. Yeah, okay, we'll have those ships and the and phasers and and tel transporters, but one thing I could not embrace is the fact that they could just walk up to a door and the door would open. <laughs> <laughs> The door knew they were there. I said, that's not possible. How, there's no, how is that possible? And of course, that we live with that now and not, nobody even thinks twice about it. So yeah. I, don't, I don't think I'm a good predictor of the future. Okay, a couple other questions I have to ask you about. This is, this is uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, astrophysicist. If he's in your town, pay, go watch. When she, when she called you space people. <laughs> now in the, in the space people community. I, I, that felt good actually. Well, it's like if you go to a hospital. I meant it in the kindest way. There's a podiatrist. Yes, I, I felt the kindness expressed in the tone, yes. Thank you. In a hospital, there's a neurosurgeon, a brain surgeon, a podiatrist, nurses. Amongst space people, where does an astrophysicist <laughs> rank? Are you the brain surgeon of the hospital? <laughs> well, I, I, I suppose you, you might be able to rank among us. Right. Uh, generally, 
you know, the theorists do all the hard, the hard sort of intellectual work, and everyone else is also really smart. But uh, everyone else is we're building, uh, building detectors, building telescopes, trying to obtain data. Um, but the, the, the leading theorists are the ones that have like worked the hardest to learn the most math, become the most fluent on the frontier of all the latest theories of the universe. So that would include people like string theorists, cosmologists, yeah. folks like that. Oh, my God. So if, if we were to rank the astrophysics community, I'd, I'd put them kind of at the top. Okay, fair enough. we would all agree to that, I think. But can I get back to like how we're going to survive this? Yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> Please do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, 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 I don't think it's unrealistic to imagine that in the centuries to come or the millennia to come, if we are still alive, that we'll figure out a way to not only explore other planets, especially exoplanets that just showed up in the catalog from the Kepler telescope, but we'll find ones that are like Earth. And then we all ship billions of us to these new planets. That's kind of the theme that happened in the movie Interstellar. Yeah. They needed another planet to go to because we were destroying our own Earth. Here's the problem. You got to turn that other planet into something you can live on. So there's this thing called terraforming where you go to a planet that's hostile to life as we know it. Seed the soils, seed the air, and then it rains. You put certain bacteria, it makes oxygen, and then you turn it into a paradise, and then you move there. But here's the problem. If we have the power to terraform another planet into something like Earth, it seems to me that we would then have the power to transform Earth back into Earth. <laughs> Right, right, right. Interesting. Yes, yeah, it is interesting. Yeah, no. So now, no matter how much we mess up this planet, okay, can if we you... have terraforming powers, there's no reason for us to leave. How about asteroids hitting the Earth? I get freaked out when I see that Russian dashboard camera and something flying through the sky. Does it freak you out? Yes, I mean it's <laughs> exciting and terrifying at the same time. Okay. Yes, because it's a reminder that we live in a shooting gallery. Earth, in its orbit around the sun, plows through hundreds of tons of meteors a day. And most of them burn up harmlessly to say, oh, look at the pretty shooting star. Oh, isn't that pretty? Well, without our atmosphere, we would look like the surface of the moon. And some of those are large enough to actually make it to the ground. Right. And the dinosaurs were not so lucky. They had one the size of Mount Everest come in, completely change the climate of the world. They end up extinct yeah. as alongside 70% of all the species on Earth at the time. So, so that even if you plan everything properly, you could still be taken out by cosmic forces. Yeah. God, it's, what a, I don't know if I feel better or worse than I, I feel a lot worse. <laughs> well, well, consider this, that were it not for the asteroid that took out the dinosaurs, our mammal ancestors would have still been running underfoot trying to escape from having been hors d'oeuvres for T-Rex. So asteroids that hit Earth Yes, they render a lot of life extinct, but they pry open new niches. But they're going to render our life extinct. Yeah, but 50 I don't want billion to be here were it not for a pre. We none of us would have been here. So you, we, you, I think you have to learn to have a love hate relationship with the asteroids. You can't have the one take out the dinosaurs and not have one take us out later on. Yeah, and, yeah. And because who's going to replace us? The rats. The roaches, I mean, we can list the creatures that are highly survival prone. Yeah. And I, I, I think to myself, is there a day where we go extinct, the rats rise up, oh. fill that niche, and then they take their little rat babies to the, the natural history museums, and then they see the bones of humans there. Ooh. They say, it's these like, are the species that once ruled the Earth. It's like Planet of the Apes or Planet of the Roaches. This is yeah. terrible oh, news. God. Neil deGrasse Tyson, oh. astrophysicist on the Cowherd Global Network. This has been an absolute wonderful thank you. experience i'm freaking out we're going to broil to death but i thank you for that he's the best thank okay, you and, and and you guys do sports right I yeah mean, so one day we <laughs> have a chat about what a game of baseball might be like on the moon yes well, let's please because you it. can't throw curveballs <laughs> oh, oh that's this right is amazing no air okay, lastly you can't what... breathe either so that you have to solve that problem first. okay if you have the sixth man a year award in the nba which is the bench, best bench player in the nba what would be the sixth man of planets what is the most underrated planet quickly there is oh i would say it's not even a planet it's one of the moons of jupiter which has a heat source inside of it by the stress of jupiter's gravity so it's kept warm even though it's far away from the sun and it's got volcanoes and it's got so the, there are moons of jupiter that are like yep 
let, let's check them out before we give up on the solar system entirely. Wow. Let's hear a plug. round of applause for Amazing. our guest. Amazing. It's Thank you. Great. Thank oh, you, sir. Oh, by the way, what, what just the name, just so you have a name, one of, one of my favorite moons of Jupiter is Europa. 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 Oh, yeah, I knew this. You talked about, and he has a great story about James Cameron. Oh, I'll tell you about it later. Uh, wait, and so, and, and I always joke that, but half seriously, that if we find life on Europa, which we think has an ocean of liquid water that's being kept warm, if we find life on Europa, what would you call it? You could only call it Europeans, I think. Whoa! <laughs> Wait, we've got we, comedy writers. Neil, this guy's you, quick. Oh, <laughs> Europa, Neil, you have to go. We, we have, have to get him on the couch next time. Neil, okay, will you come we will. in the studio next time? Yes, come I, on the studio. Come in our, our, I'd be happy to knock on your door. You, yes. All right, we got to go take breaks. Neil deGrasse Tyson, fantastic <laughs> in LA. It's the Herd.